Hello, everyone, and welcome to my channel. Today, I have a special treat for you. I'm going to tell you about three terrifying horror stories from the old church. Are you ready to get scared? Let's begin. The first story is about the bell ringer's secret. In the quaint village of Eldritch Hollow, the ancient church stood as a silent sentinel, its bell tower reaching into the mist like a finger accusing the heavens. The villagers spoke in hushed tones about the bell ringer, a reclusive figure whose face no one had seen in years. They called him Old Jacob, and every soul in the hamlet feared the mournful peals that echoed from the belfry at the stroke of midnight. The legend of Old Jacob was as old as the hills that cradled Eldritch Hollow. It was said that he had been the church's bell ringer for as long as anyone could remember, his life shrouded in secrecy. Whispers of a hidden past, a forbidden love, and a pact with dark forces swirled around him like the autumn leaves that danced in the chilly wind. On a night black as pitch, with a new moon whispering secrets to the stars, young Thomas, fueled by curiosity and the reckless bravery of youth, decided to uncover the truth. He crept into the church as the clock tower struck eleven, the silence of the sanctuary enveloping him like a shroud. As the minutes ticked by, Thomas ascended the narrow, spiraling staircase to the bell tower. The air grew colder with each step, and the darkness seemed to press against him with tangible force. At last, he reached the top, where he found old Jacob, or what was left of him. The bell ringer was nothing more than a skeleton, clad in tattered robes, his bony fingers wrapped around the rope that controlled the bell. But the most terrifying sight was the spectral figure that stood beside him, a shadowy entity with eyes like burning coals and a smile that promised eternal torment. The ghostly figure turned to Thomas, its voice a chilling whisper that seemed to come from the very walls. The secret of the bell ringer is a curse passed through the ages. It hissed. Each toll of the bell is a soul claimed by the darkness. And now you too shall join our eternal vigil. With a heart-pounding terror, Thomas fled, the bell's somber tolling marking his escape. He never spoke of that night, but the secret of the bell ringer followed him to his grave. And still, the bell tolls at midnight, a reminder of the pact that binds old Jacob to the church and the darkness that lurks within Eldritch Hollow. The second story is about the unseen choir. In the heart of the ancient forest, where the mist perpetually lingered like a shroud, there stood an abandoned chapel. Its once hallowed halls were now home to nothing but silence and decay. Or so it seemed. For every night, as the moon reached its zenith, an ethereal melody would seep through the crumbling walls. The unseen choir would begin its haunting lament, a chorus of voices so pure yet filled with an unspeakable sorrow that chilled the bones of any who dared to listen. The villagers nearby spoke of the choir in hushed tones, a spectral ensemble bound to the chapel for a sin long forgotten. They were the lost souls of a congregation who had worshipped a deity not of this world, a being that promised eternal life but delivered only damnation. As the story went, one curious soul, a traveler named Alara ventured into the forest, drawn by the allure of the unseen singers. Guided by the ghostly hymn, she found the chapel, its doors agape as if inviting her in. Inside, the music swelled, enveloping her in a symphony of despair. The pews were empty, the altar bare, yet the voices surrounded her, their words indecipherable but their message clear, they yearned for release. Alara, moved by the choir's plight, vowed to free them from their eternal servitude. She scoured ancient texts and consulted forbidden tomes, learning of a ritual that could sever the choir's bond to the chapel. Under the light of the next full moon, she returned, armed with knowledge and a heart full of determination. As the unseen choir began its nocturnal dirge, Alara started the ritual. But as the incantations left her lips, the air grew colder, the darkness deeper. The voices of the choir crescendoed into a cacophony of chaos, their pain turning to rage. 
They were not seeking salvation. They were hungering for a new soul to join their endless requiem. The chapel shook with their fury, the very foundation threatening to crumble. Alara realized her grave mistake too late. The entity they worshipped had been waiting, biding its time, and she had just opened the door. With a final, desperate plea, Alara broke the ritual, but the damage was done. The chapel collapsed around her, and as the dust settled, the forest fell silent once more. The unseen choir was never heard again. Some say they were finally at peace, while others believe they claimed Alara as one of their own, her voice now part of their eternal lament. The chapel's ruins stand as a grim reminder of the unseen choir, a monument to the unseen and the unheard, forever echoing a melody of horror through the whispering forest. The third story is about the stained glass sentinel. In the heart of Ville Vong, where the streets whisper of forgotten tales, there stood an ancient cathedral, its spires clawing at the sky. The locals spoke little of it, save for hushed warnings to steer clear when the moon was but a sliver in the heavens. For within its hallowed walls lurked the stained glass sentinel, a spectral guardian bound to the kaleidoscope of colored panes that depicted scenes of divine judgment and infernal damnation. The story begins with a curious historian, Lin, whose thirst for knowledge led her to the cathedral's decrepit doors. The air was thick with the scent of mildew and decay, yet it was the beauty of the stained glass that ensnared her gaze. As twilight bled into night, Lin's shadow stretched long and thin across the pews, a silent audience to her impending folly. With a gentle touch, Lin traced the contours of the glass, her fingers pausing over a peculiar piece, a figure robed in crimson, its face a void of darkness. The sentinel, as the legend named it, was said to be the soul of a heretic, sealed within the glass for eternity. It was a tale Lin had dismissed as mere superstition, until the glass beneath her fingers pulsed with a cold life. The ground trembled, the air grew frigid, and the once still figure began to shift, its edges blurring with a spectral light. Lin stumbled back, her heart a drumbeat in the silence, as the sentinel stepped forth from its prison. It was a creature of nightmares, its form a mosaic of jagged shards, its eyes burning with an unholy fire. You who have awakened me, it spoke, its voice the sound of shattering glass, shall bear witness to the sins etched in light and color. Lin could only watch in horror as the scenes within the glass came alive, each pane a window to a tormented soul's final moments. The air was filled with the echoes of their screams, their pleas for mercy, their cries of anguish. And as the sentinel loomed closer, its shadow enveloping her, Lin realized the truth of the legend. The stained glass sentinel was not just a keeper of stories. It was a judge of the living, a herald of doom for those who dared disturb its vigil. Lin's fate was sealed, another tale to be woven into the glass, another soul to be judged at the whim of the stained glass sentinel. And so, the cathedral stands, a sentinel over Ville Vong, its windows a patchwork of horror and beauty. They say on nights when the moon is but a sliver, you can hear the faintest sound of glass creaking, shifting, alive with the souls of the damned. Beware the stained glass sentinel, for its judgment is eternal, and its reach knows no bounds. These are just one of the many horror stories. There are many more out there, waiting to be discovered and told. Do you have any horror stories of your own? Share them in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more spooky content. Until next time, stay safe and stay curious. Bye.